Welcome back. I'm Carol Randolph along with our commentator, Matthew Rosenblum. We have just heard the direct testimony from the defendant, Raymond Childs, who's on the stand. He talked about how he happened to meet uh, David Swartz, the deceased. He's admitted that he killed him, but he says that he did so when he, they went to this cheap motel and they were sitting around watching a movie. He expected, he said, for women to be coming in to join them when Mr. Schwartz made a, a sexual advance toward him. He says he told him, I'm not like that, no, no, and he continued, and that he began to defend himself, he says, because he thought he was going to be raped. He defended himself with a knife. In fact, he stabbed Mr. Schwartz 27 times. We were told by the prosecution that 10 of those 27 stab wounds were fatal. What about his direct examination and testimony here, Matthew? Many times you and I were commenting about there were leading questions there. Now let's just first define that and then go into, we heard no objections, but what exactly was going on? Uh, typically a leading question uh, requ uh, requires a yes or no answer, and the uh, defense attorney in this case was drawing the story out of the defendant by basically saying, asking him questions. Yeah, when you couldn't yes start the no. car, you did so and so, yeah, right. Yeah, and, and actually assuming facts, not an evidence, he was saying, and then after you did this, right. when the guy never testified that he had done it. Um, but when things are going well for you, you don't make every objection you can in a trial, and I suppose the prosecutor was so, uh, I, I mean, I found myself, can't, uh, I'm in a position where I can't wait to cross-examine this defendant because there are so many holes in a story. Uh, so you sit, you don't make the objections, you don't alienate the jury, let this guy say what he has to say, and then uh, take your chance with him. Now, there are occasions when you are permitted to ask leading questions, when you have a child up there, when you have a hostile witness, when you have someone who's maybe mentally incompetent or, or some, something like that. Sure. So I don't know whether or not uh, the latter part was something. But after seeing that videotape, you and I were talking about that again, his answers and comments seemed to flow better. But even when Mr. Sheehan gave him that opportunity to tell us about it, it seemed to kind of be very stilted and, and, and without any emotion. Very unsympathetic, holes in a story that didn't exist in the video, at least the part of the video that, that I saw. Uh, I kept asking myself, why didn't he just leave? I mean, he seems to be bigger than uh, Mr. Swartz was. He's certainly 40 years younger. Uh, he certainly could have run away. He certainly could have fought him off without a knife. Why not stab him once and mobilize him and get out? I mean, he just didn't... Uh, there's so many holes. I, I'm, I'm and this from a defense attorney, too. Well, you know, a witness is a witness, and the, and the competitive juices flow. I would love to cross-examine him just, you know, for the fun of it. All right, just on the other hand, would, would there be anything, that, again, the benefit of hindsight that you think you might have done as a uh, defense attorney? I, I would have done everything I could, and I'm not sure that it wasn't done here to keep him off the stand. I, I would have... Uh, uh, I don't know that this is the defense I would have used, uh, because even if successful with an extreme emotional disturbance defense, uh, he's looking at a, a possible eight and a third to 25 years, if successful. Mm -hmm. He's also, uh, as I understand, admitted to the robbery, uh, which is another eight and a third to 25 years, and it could be consecutive. Well, it's there. He doesn't kind of admit it, but he says that, Mr. Swartz says, take anything, so you hear him at least... Uh, you, but you there's, I think he's charged with the robbery of taking the... After, Absolutely, After yes. the death. That's a separate act. That's a robbery. So even if successful, this defense... Uh, this defendant may go away for 16 and two-thirds years uh, or thereabouts. So I'm not so sure that it might not have been better, especially you have to, as a, as a defense lawyer, you have to know the venue you're in. When I pick a, a jury on the island, I'm very careful if I have to criticize a police officer, I'll ask the jury beforehand, is it possible, Mrs. Randolph, that a police officer could be mistaken? Is it possible that a police officer could slant testimony to the way he or she views it. Is it possible that a police officer could even lie? When you pick a, a jury in the Bronx, you, uh, the prosecutor asks, and the joke is, and it's almost true, do you think a police officer could tell the truth? Mm. So you have a case in the Bronx, you might want to say the whole video is ridiculous. He said what they told him to say. He didn't do it. He can't. Uh, a defense along the lines of, what if this happened? He came upon, and I don't know the forensic evidence in the case, he, he's, he is a, a street walker. He came upon a, a guy in the uh, hotel. Maybe a friend of his told him he just killed him. And he gets there, he finds the knife, gets his fingerprints all over it, takes the guy's credit cards. And yes, he's guilty of robbery, but he had nothing to do with the murder or something like that. Um, at least 
give your client the opportunity that if you're successful, he can get out in eight and two thirds years as opposed to sixteen and uh, seventeen and a, a third or whatever it is. Um, I don't know, and I'm not making any comments on the strategies. And mm -hmm. obviously, the client has to consent to the defense you're using. Uh, we had a client once where we wanted to uh, use an insanity defense, and if anyone was ever insane, it was this client. And if anyone ever fit the legal definition, and he refused to permit us uh, to, to do that, to yeah. use an insanity defense. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, again, as in testifying, the client has the final word as to his defense, whether he'll take the stand, whether or not to waive a jury. All right. Well, now, you've been saying all along that you couldn't wait to cross-examine him. Let's see what Mr. McCarthy does as he begins his cross-examination of the defendant, Raymond Childs. 